Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at frame forwarding. We'll be discussing switching in a network, the switch MAC address table, and the switch learn and forward method. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. As we talk about a switch and how they forward the frames, we need to talk about two terms, ingress and egress. Ingress is entering in the interface, data coming into the interface. Egress is exiting the interface, data exiting the interface. Ingress going in, egress exiting. Now, switches, they forward based on the ingre ingress interface so the port in which that data comes in on and the destination MAC address. It, it looks at both of those to make a forwarding decision. MAC address tables make the forwarding decision. Here we see a port address table. This is a simplified version. We have the destination address here. Normally this, is, this would be a true MAC address, but for our demonstration purposes, we just have a simple little address here. Then we have what port it's associated with. So port one, the device that has the MAC address of EE is connected here. And, and so you can kind of think about this is port, or this is device EE on port one. Then we have AA, BA, and so on and so forth. And what the switch does is it looks at the data coming in and then it looks to see what that destination MAC address is. It finds it in its port. And let's say we have a frame destination destined for device with the MAC address of AA. We send it out of port two. It came in on a different port. It goes out on port two based upon our MAC address table. Now switches, they'll never allow traffic to be forwarded out the interface it was received in on. If a switch receives information coming in on a port, it's going to assume that it came into that port for a reason, it shouldn't have to go back out that port. It will never forward it back out that same port. The switch MAC address table uses the destination MAC address. In the frame, there's a destination MAC address. It uses that destination MAC address to determine what egress, what port it's going to go out on. Now, the switch, it has to learn what interfaces are connected on what ports and where they're located. It builds this MAC address table. Now, sometimes the MAC address table is referred to as a CAM table. CAM stands for content addressable memory. Now, this is basically the same thing as a MAC address table. Why do they have two names? I don't really know for sure, but a MAC address table and a CAM table, they are the same thing. They refer to the same MAC address to port mapping. The switch uses a two-step process in order to forward packets. It's called the learn and forward process. The first step is learning. What it does is it adds that source MAC address in the table if it's not already there. When that, when that packet originally comes into the switch, it says, okay, it came from this source MAC address and that's in the header of the frame and we put that in our address table associated with what port it came in on. Then we forward that port out. We look at our MAC address table, we look at the destination MAC address from that frame header, we look at our MAC address table. If it's in the MAC address table, we forward it out the corresponding port. If it's not in there, we flooded out all the, all the ports except for the one it came in on. So this is the two-step process, learn and forward. If you like this episode on frame forwarding and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. We're gonna take a look at how a switch goes and builds its MAC table. Here we're gonna examine where P1 
PCA sends a frame to PCB, and then PCB is, sends that frame back to PCA. We're going to examine how switches S1 and S2 build their MAC address table, and how they forward frames based on that information in those MAC address tables. To start off with, PCA has an Ethernet frame to send to PCB. The source MAC address of the Ethernet frame is 00A, that's the MAC address of PCA, and it has a destination MAC address of 00B, that's the, des that's the MAC address of PCB. The Ethernet frame is sent to switch S1. S1 receives that Ethernet frame, examines the source MAC address right here, and notices that this MAC address, the source MAC address, is not in its own MAC address table. So it adds the MAC address and incoming port number to its own MAC address table. Next, switch S1 examines the destination MAC address. The destination MAC address, here's that first MAC address in the frame header and notices that this MAC address, the destination MAC address, is not in its own MAC address table. So it floods it out of all ports. It goes out of port four and goes out of port three. There's nothing connected to port two, so it doesn't send it out of port two. It does not send it out of the port it received it in on. It received it on port one, so it does not send it back out there. PCB receives that Ethernet frame that was forwarded, examines the destination MAC address against its own MAC address, and notices that those two are a match, and receives the rest of the frame. At the same time, the Ethernet frame continues to be forwarded onto switch S2. Switch S2 then examines the source MAC address of the frame here and notices it is not in its own MAC address table. So it adds the MAC address and incoming port number into its own MAC address table. Next, switch S2 examines the destination MAC address and it notices that that destination MAC address is not in its own MAC address table. So it floods it out all ports except for the port it came in on. It goes out those ports. PCC receives that Ethernet frame. PCC's MAC address does not match that destination MAC address. Those two don't match. So it does not accept the rest of the frame. Meanwhile, it also goes out port 4 to the router. That router receives that Ethernet frame. The router then examines its own MAC address and compares it to the destination MAC address. And it sees that these two are not a match and it does not receive the rest of the frame. Now, let's have PCB send a frame back to PCA. The source MAC address of the frame is now 00B. It's coming from PCB right here. Destination is the MAC address of PCA. That's where we're going. We have our destination and source MAC addresses there. PCB sends that Ethernet frame to switch S1. Switch S1 notices that that source MAC address is not in its own MAC address table. And so it adds the source MAC address and accompanying port number to its own MAC address table. Next, switch S1 examines the destination MAC address and notices that that destination MAC address is, a, is in its own MAC address table. And the switch then just sends that ethernet frame out of port one to PCA. PCA receives that ethernet frame, examines the destination MAC address to its own MAC address and notices its match and receives that entire frame in. 
The switch uses application-specific integrated circuits, or commonly called ASICs, to make very quick decisions. Those are specially built circuits to do a function, and in this case, to forward frames. There are two methods that switches use to make forwarding decisions. One is the store and forward method, and the other is the cut-through method. In the store and forward method, this is where we do air checking. What the store and forward method does is it gets the entire frame in, the from the beginning all the way through the end and everything in between, it stores all of that in RAM. When it gets all of that in RAM, what it does is it looks at the data, looks at the frame, it calculates that cyclic redundancy check. That's a process in which that we run, run the data and information through an algorithm, we get a number. We compare that number to this frame check sequence checksum field right here. If these two numbers match, the data is hasn't been changed, hasn't been manipulated, we know that it is good data. Now, if the number we calculated when we did our, did our cyclic redundancy check, ran through our algorithm right now on that switch, doesn't compare to the number that is in the trailer of the ethernet frame, we, we, somebody has tampered with that data. Somebody has changed it. Maybe there was some data corruption. Maybe a hacker got in and changed the decimal point. Something happened. And at that point in time, that data is considered corrupted and we're just going to delete it. Now, layer two does error detection or error checking. It doesn't do error correction. It doesn't ask for the retransmission of data. The upper layers take care of that. Layer two is only error detection, error checking. The Thing with store and forward is it takes a lot of RAM because you have to store that entire frame in memory. The second method is cut through. The cut through method is really quick. And how this works is once the frame starts coming in, the preamble has eight bytes, then we have the destination MAC address. Once this destination MAC address comes in, the switch then starts forwarding it right away. It doesn't wait and load in all the rest of the fields, doesn't load in the data, doesn't load in that frame check sequence check checksum field, and it just starts forwarding the data. There is a special cut through method, it's called fa fragment free or frag free method. And it loads the first 64 bytes. Here, we're loading the first 14 bytes and sending it on. What we do is we load in the first 64 bytes. Usually, errors happen in the first 64 bytes. It's quicker. We don't have to store the entire frame, and it goes through. Now, where you'd use the cut-through method is if you want to keep low latency on your network. For some reason, you need to get data through your network really, really quick. And if you need it in under 10 seconds, a lot of times people use cut through as their method. We don't go through this, the frame check sequence and the cyclic redundancy check that helps us eliminate some of our bandwidth, lets our switches work faster because it frees up RAM. And it also happens when we have bandwidth issues that helps free some stuff up. What the one catch here is when you do cut through, the ingress and egress ports, they need to be the same speed. The in the ports where data comes in on, the ports where data goes out, they need to be the same speed. If they can't be the same speed, then we need to use the store and forward. But if there's the same speed, then we can use the cut through method. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on frame forwarding. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, devtechify.com, and you can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. 
I'll see you next time for another great adventure.